The Pajama Game originally opened on Broadway in 1954 and ran for 1,063 performances. It's had two revivals, one in 1973, the other in 2006. The original production won a Tony Award for Best Musical and the 2006 Broadway Revival won a Tony for Best Revival of a Musical. This show is one of the old classic musical theater love stories. Here's a question, how is Pajama Game like Newsies? Answer, they both involve a strike. So here's the story. A strike is expected to happen very soon at the Sleep Tight Pajama Factory where the workers produce pajamas at super speed and of course they sing about it while they do. They sing Racing with the Clock. When you're racing with the clock, when you're racing with the clock, and the second hand doesn't understand that your back may break and your fingers shake and your constitution isn't made of rock. It's a losing race when you're racing with the racing, racing, racing with the clock. Thank you. In the middle of this craziness, a new boss named Sid Sorokin has come from out of town to supervise the factory. He sings about that in the song, A New Town is a Blue Town, and now he's alone and sad. The union leader, whose name is Prez, kind of ironic, is seeking a wage increase of seven and a half cents an hour for the sleep tight employees. By the way, that would be 60 cents more a day. Remember, it's 1954. There's a second union leader helping Prez lead the charge. Her name is Babe. Really, her name is Catherine, but everyone calls her Babe. Go figure. Being management, Sid is against the strike and Babe is in favor of the strike, putting them in opposite camps. So obviously, they're going to have some kind of romantic interest, which, by the way, is sparked by their very first encounter. Despite teasing from her co-workers, Babe appears to reject Sid singing, I'm not at all in love with the ladies. It's basically many a new day, I won't say I'm in love, or any of those, nah, -uh, I don't like him songs we have in musical theater. Meanwhile, Sid, rejected again by Babe, is forced to confide his feelings into a recorder, singing the song, Hey There. Its lyrics are, Hey there, you with the stars in your eyes. Love never made a fool of you. You used to be too wise. Then he has a conversation with himself as the recorder plays what he already sang. Classic. The song was recorded by a lot of famous singers and reached number one on Billboard's Top 100. So cool. Okay, back to the story. During the annual company picnic, Prez chases after Gladys, who is the company president's secretary and the featured dance role of the show. She rejects his advances. But Babe warms up to Sid, and the entire company sings once a year day at the picnic with, of course, a giant dance break. Later at Babe's house, Sid's romantic attempts are at first thwarted by Babe, but eventually the walls come down and the two admit their love for one another. However, when they return to the factory, it's another story. A slowdown has been staged by the union and strongly supported by Babe as the workers sing a very slow version of Racing with the Clock. Racing with the Clock, you get the idea. Sid, as factory superintendent, demands an honest day's work and threatens to fire slackers. Babe, however, still wants to fight for their cause and kicks her foot into the machinery, causing a total breakdown. Sid reluctantly fires her. As she leaves, he begins to wonder whether a romance with her is a mistake and reprises, hey there, because it's a good song and people like hearing it. That's how the first act ends. Dun, dun, da. Act two starts with a big old union meeting and the song Steam Heat is performed by three of the workers. After the main meeting, the grievance committee meets at Babe's house to discuss further tactics, such as mismatching sizes of pajamas and sewing the fly buttons onto the bottom so that they are likely to come off and leave their wearers pantless. Yes, very devious. <laughs> Sid arrives and tries to smooth things over with Babe. Despite her feelings for Sid, she pushes him away and we get yet another reprise of Hey There because you can never get enough of that one. Later, Sid becomes convinced that Babe's championship of the union is in fact justified. He takes Gladys, who is the company president's secretary, out for the evening to Hernando's hideaway. Turns out that pretty much everyone in the whole company is there and they sing Hernando's hideaway partially in darkness. Yep, that's Harvey Evans in Hernando's hideaway in the movie version. Sid's plan is to persuade Gladys to lend him the key to the company's books, which she always carries with her. His plan works. Using Gladys's key, Sid discovers that the big boss, Mr. Hassler, has already tacked on the extra seven and one half cents to the production cost, but has kept all the extra profits for himself. Typical. 
Sid then brings about Hassler's consent to a pay raise and rushes to bring the news to the union rally, where they are already singing seven and a half cents. This news brings peace to the factory and to his love life, allows him to reconnect with Babe, and everyone goes out to celebrate at her Nando's hideaway. There are several subplots with pretty darn hysterical characters that I haven't addressed here, including jealousy, knife throwing, and a dream ballet because it was the 50s and dream ballets were all the rage. The original production starred John Ray and Janice Page as Sid and Babe. In 1957, the movie version was released starring John Raitt and Doris Day. The 2006 production starred Harry Connick Jr. and Kelly O'Hara. John Raitt is the father of Bonnie Raitt, the famous country singer. He was the golden throat baritone of that era, creating the role of Curly in Oklahoma and Billy Bigelow in Carousel. Janice Page created the role of Babe on Broadway. At the age of 97, she is now one of the last surviving stars from the golden age of Hollywood, famous for her work in movies, television, and musical theater. Doris Day was already an established movie star when she was cast in the role of Babe for the movie. She had starred alongside Rock Hudson, Frank Sinatra, Kirk Douglas, Clark Gable, Cary Grant, and many others. If you ever hear the song K Sera Sera, it's probably her singing it. She passed last year at the age of 97. Here's a little fun fact. This production is also noted for starting the career of Shirley MacLaine. She was part of the ensemble and was selected to understudy the role of Gladys, the featured dance role. Gladys injured her ankle and McLean filled the role for several months. A director slash producer from Paramount Pictures was an audience member at one of McLean's performances and signed her as a contract player for Paramount. Pajama Game is fun with a little conflict, some great songs, lots of dancing, romance, and a ton of heart. The end.